Hello everybody and welcome back to the Celtic FC 25 career mode. It's the big one again lads, the old farm derby. That is the game that will be kicking off this episode. Before we get into the game, I just wanted to show you the league table at the moment. As you can see here, we are five points clear of Rangers. They are in second with 54 points. We are currently top with 59 points. Only one L to our name, but it actually was in this fixture uh, a couple of episodes ago. So a bit of revenge is what we're looking for here. We have since beaten them at Celtic Park, but it would it would be great to get another result against them at Ibrox as well. As you can see there, they have a slightly better defence than we do, but we have a much better attack. So it's uh, going to be an interesting game. Something's got to give, and hopefully it'll be their defence. But anyways, that is the first full game that we will get into today. We have a rake of games then we need to get through, so this will be a very highlight-heavy episode. I think we have a game against Hibs that I might give uh, a play in full as well. But every other game we'll either sim or we'll play the highlights of. But we will start with the full game here against Rangers at Ibrox in the Old Firm. I'm so excited for this game, I nearly forgot to hit record. I was talking there for like two minutes and was like, wait, did I hit the record button? I didn't. So, yeah, thankfully I noticed before the game kicked off. But anyways, we are here at Ibrox as I nearly lose my voice. Bloody hell. The illness is still there, but I'm fighting through it. I did forget to put us in the home kit. It automatically put us in the away kit, which is annoying because I like the visual of green and white against blue. But listen, whatever. Doesn't matter. I do love this away kit as well, though. But it looks like they've got their strongest team, Rangers. Enough of the pleasantries. Let's get on with this. The only fixture we've lost so far this season, but I don't plan on losing it twice. Let's be having your Rangers. Who well, listen, I'll give a little bit of credit to. This title race is a lot closer than I was expecting it to be. I thought with how last season went, we'd be a little bit more comfortable this time around. And we're still, obviously, the favourites, and we're still top of the league by a decent margin. But, uh... There's still a chance that it could change. But let's try and make sure that doesn't happen. But here's Alistair Johnson, who I've been uh, very happy with. Or Johnston, I should say. Coon's offside there, unfortunately. And listen, I've, I've seen people criticise the Scottish League in the game and the fact that you play the same teams over and over again. And listen, it's, it's a fair criticism. It's not the Scottish League's fault. It's just the fact that EA don't want to get the licences for the um, the lower league teams. It was funny, like when Rangers had to uh, go through the ranks to get back to the Scottish uh, Premiership, they were actually in the rest of the world section for a bit. Oh my God, he's offside. He's offside. Is he? Please tell me he's offside. I think he's offside. Yes, the score hasn't changed. I was very confused there for a second because the fans were not uh, looking too disappointed there like they normally would if it was offside. But we do get away with one there. But yeah, Rangers were in the rest of the world section. And if memory is serving me correctly, I'm pretty sure FIFA 17, they weren't even in the game. Which is mad. Like, obviously, I'm not a Rangers fan, but they are a big club. And the fact they weren't even in the game was quite crazy. Oh, is he the... Nearly gives us the lead here. Jack Butland again taking goal kicks with his right foot. I am convinced that man is left footed. I'm almost certain he is. But anyways, whatever. It's not a big deal. It doesn't play for us. So I shouldn't be overly concerned about it. But uh, the Champions League game as well that we'll be playing the highlights of after this one. Uh, I was going to play it in full, but the thing is, we know that we are certain of finishing. That was a very risky ball. We are certain to finish in the top 24. We know that we can't finish any lower than 19th. Oh, Brook, uh, Brooks, what are you doing? Poor ball. Hang on now. Let me hold that thought for a second. Dorado, get stuck in, will you? Good block. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, pull us in. Pulling out a brilliant save. Far too close for comfort there. But uh, I'll get back to the Champions League topic there in a second. Let me just finish this attack. Can I finish with the goal? No, I can't. Proper gets uh, in the way there. But anyways, as I was saying, um, we have an outside chance of finishing in the top eight. But a lot of results would need to go our way. But we will address the final table after the highlights. Brooks with a good tackle. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's dragged him down. I thought he was going to be sent off there for a second. What in the name of God was Brooks doing there? Look at this. 
<laughs> well, I've seen that animation a few times from other content creators doing career mode, but it's the first time I've seen it in this save. And Tavernier has a chance to give Rangers the lead here. Can Pulisson get the save? Yes, he can! Brilliant save! We stop the shot from 12 yards, and it is still stalemate here. And Brooks, I tell you what, lad, you can let out a huge sigh of relief there. There was no need to pull him down, especially at that area of the pitch. But thankfully, it hasn't cost us, at least not yet. Here's Kuhn. Oh, I just didn't have the pace. I have turned on the weather effects as well, just to see what it's like. Uh, curiosity got the better of me, and I was like, you know what, let's test it out. And I could definitely feel the Kuhn wasn't as quick there as he normally would be. So, it's something that, uh... It's something that I said we'd, we'd see how it goes. If I find that it gets a bit too annoying, though, I'll probably tone it down a small bit with the weather effects, because, uh... As much as I like those realistic elements, sometimes they can take away from the fun element of the game. But I tell you what is very fun, it's when we take the lead in the Old Firm Derby, and it's that man Kuhn. He wasn't going to slow down there, made out with a brilliant ball across, the two wingers linking up. We save a penalty at one end, we go up and score on the other end. Well, in real life, you wouldn't see Celtic fans there. At the moment, there's no away fans allowed. Which, you know... People have mixed opinions on, which is probably putting it quite mildly. Some people might argue that it's not mixed. People are quite upset by it. I'm not going to comment on that. I'm not going to comment on it. I would love to go to an old firm game at some stage. It would be a pretty cool thing to experience. Obviously, at Celtic Park. Um, it's, it, it's, you know, it's, it's a fixture that's world-renowned for being very intense. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely on the list of uh, games I'd love to go and see. Good interception there by Carter Vickers. I think... Oh, no, it was Dorado. Never mind. Here's Meda. Over to Hatate. Oh, Ida. I thought he was going to run between the lines there. But we're approaching the halftime break. You know what? Let's go back to the keeper. Only one added minute, as per usual. Brooks, the luckiest man in Ibrox at the moment. But we are 1-0 up. Bit of a cagey performance at the start. Rangers had a goal disallowed. They had a penalty saved. But we were the ones who took the lead. The only annoying thing is, though, as you can see there, Carter Vickers is knackered. And Brooks is on a yellow. I am going to take off Carter Vickers, though. Just to be on the safe side. Santos is a bit tired as well, but I'll keep him on for now. I'll keep him on for now. And, uh, hopefully... He might be able to contribute... Another goal... He's been contributing quite a few of them lately. If I sound like I'm speaking a little bit slower as well, lads, it's because you'll, some of you will remember if you watched uh, not the last episode, but the episode before, I wasn't feeling the best. Uh, still a little bit under the weather. My throat is just a bit dry at the moment, so uh, sometimes I just have to slow down a small bit because uh, it can get a bit sore. But I tell you what, Rangers will have a sore arse here in a second. I was talking about sore throats. I don't know why I had to say sore arse, but anyways. TMI, Joe. TMI. I will say, though, whether you're a Celtic fan or a Rangers fan, it's just great to have both the old form stadiums. In the game, oh, Brooks, he has had a shocker today. He's still recovering from his Hell in a Cell match the other day against Rangers fan Drew McIntyre. And it's showing here because he looks like a wounded animal at the moment. And Rangers can smell the blood. I may have to take him off in a second. Johnston can do a job at centre-back, so I might look at making that change. Because Brooks has not been at it today. Cut a very emotional promo on Raw the other night. And I think the emotions are still running through him. He's old and he's tired. But at the moment, you're working with grown men, punk. You ain't working with any children, so... Don't let us down. Is Santos. Go on, lad. Oh, I tell you what, not a bad effort. But I think it's probably time to take him off. We'll bring on Ryan Christie. And he'll actually be able to whip in this corner kick. They have Hatate on it, but I will put Christie on the corner. Half an hour to go. This would be a great time to get a second goal. Can Brooks be the one to get it? Decent header. But Butland was able to get it into his... 
into his palms. And Rangers now go on the break. Oh, they've done me there. They've done me there. Oh, it's a good save by Pulisic and Sesson Young. <sighs> Got lucky there. Nearly gave them a chance at a... At a rebound there. But it goes out for our throw-in. I, I, I really like this away kit, but it... Oh, my fucking God. What am I doing? What am I doing? That's going to be 1-1. One, one. Yeah, fucking hell. And I only have myself to blame. Only have myself to blame. The passing today has been atrocious. What is going on? I thought he got a touch on it there for a second, the keeper. Maybe he did. Let's have another look at this. Scales playing him on side. Brooks left in no man's land. Keeper might have got a slight touch, but nowhere near enough. Right. Have to make the last few changes here. Ida hasn't really been at it today. Let's bring on Furuhashi. Uh, Brooks, I just can't risk it. We'll bring on... Uh, Marquee at right back and let's bring on I'm going to keep Sesson Young there I'm actually going to bring on McGregor Dorado's a bit complacent and I think his passing has definitely been affected by that but all square here again at Ibrox but what I was going to say earlier was no matter what side of the, the Glasgow divide that you're on it is cool to have both stadiums in the game Here's Christie. Oh, unlucky. I'd love to get Rangers in Europe at some stage in this save. That would be pretty cool. But I, I can't see it happening. Unfortunately! Because oh. they're mostly in the Europa League. And we will mostly be in the Champions League. I know that Rangers have played qualifiers for the Champions League as well. Um, they did play them this season and got knocked out. But listen, who knows? They might, uh, they might get through at some stage and we might have some European old farm derbies which would be pretty incredible Kyogo Furuhashi I tell you what he is becoming the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer of this team he doesn't start as much as he used to but you just know when you bring him on up against some tired legs he will produce the goods and he's done it here again Butland got pretty close to it but it was a bit too quick for him Maida with another assist Furuhashi with the strike, Celtic with the goal, and Celtic with the lead. Only 10 minutes to go as well. Come on, let's try and hold on here. Every point matters at this stage. Aberdeen will be playing as well in this episode. They are in third, but it's a distant third at the moment. But still, anything can happen on the day. So I'll still be taking that very seriously. Oh, my heart just stopped there. My heart just stopped there. Rangers coming dangerously close to getting an equaliser. It clips the post as, for some reason, I'm giving instructions to a player who's already been taken off. And we're out of subs, so even if I hadn't taken him off, I wouldn't be able to bring him on anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, love to see that from EA. And that wasn't in the game last year. That cutscene was kept exclusively for the subs who had not yet been brought on. But EA's mentality sometimes can be, it's not broken, so let's break it. <laughs> oh, God. Anyways. We can break some uh, of Ranger's spirit here if we get yet another one. Oh, it's a good interception. And again, the defense and midfield has been left open. McGregor tracking back. Oh, what's he done here? What has he done there? He's gone for the spectacular. And Pulisic will happily get that into his grasp. Only two added minutes. Let's get this as far away from our half as possible. Almeida has done really well into Hitate. And can he find our third Japanese player on the pitch? He can. Butland got the save, but it doesn't matter. Thankfully, we do get the three points here at Ibrox. Revenge for what happened a few episodes ago. And we extend our lead at the top of the table to eight points. You love to see it. Our attention then focused on the Champions League after that Rangers game, our last game in the league phase where we knew that we were through to the playoffs at least, but still had an outside chance at qualifying for the uh, last 16 straight away. That will not be happening. Uh, Frankfurt, Europa League winners in the previous season, they took a 1-0 lead here. Absolutely made shit of Brooks there. Just not been his episode so far. And that gave them a 1-0 lead. I started Kyogo Furuhashi in this game and uh, tried a power shot here. 
it was a really good save by the keeper, I have to say. But he did follow up and score the rebound with his head. And that was 1-1 at halftime. I did use the highlights feature for this game as well. The next highlight was a penalty. That was 2-1. It was their final highlight of the game, Frankfurt. We had a very good chance here. I was in two minds about whether I square it or whether I take the shot. And the keeper made two very good saves there. So unfortunately, we don't beat Frankfurt here in the final Champions League game. But we know that we will be playing a playoff fixture. And let's see if we know who that's against. So they haven't told us yet who the uh, playoff fixtures or playoff tie will be against. But we did finish in 16th, 8 places lower. No, not 8 places, 10 places lower, I should say, than what we finished last season. 8 places outside of automatic qualification. So let's see the other teams who finished outside the top 8. Milan, Bayer Leverkusen, Juventus, City, Ferran, Vara, Rossi, Plassi, Tessi, CTC. I'll never know how to pronounce that name. Uh, Chelsea, Barcelona, Sporting, Valencia, Porto, Atletico, United, Feyenoord, Leipzig, and Fenerbahce. If you ask me which opponent I would like, to be honest with you, Feyenoord. Bit of revenge for the uh, cup, uh, the European Cup final in the 70s. Uh, but PSV, Anderlecht, Bayern Munich, Lens, Sevilla, Lyon, Athens, Slavia, Prague, Apwell, Young Boys, Malmo and Copenhagen all getting eliminated. I would imagine Liverpool did win the league phase, or top it I should say. They did, but Monaco finishing level on points with them as well. So that came down to goal difference. Two teams that we uh, both uh, lost to. Actually, we lost to the three top teams there. Uh, Frankfurt as well so those were the three teams leading the way Real Madrid narrowly getting into the last 16 again on goal difference Roma Napoli Dortmund and PSG as well so we'll keep an eye on it to see who our playoff tie will be against and hopefully we can take one step closer to getting our goal this season of getting to at least the quarterfinals of the Champions League so our next game here is against Motherwell. They are in a very, very distant fifth. We've made a couple of changes. There was one or two tired legs. So Yang comes in for Kuhn. I decided to put Christie in this game as well. Hatate wasn't overly tired, but he was tired enough that I said I'd take him off and uh, give Christie a run, which puts Santos over on the left where he's been playing really well as of late. Ida's back in the team as well after not starting against Frankfurt. And he is on the score sheet as well as Ryan Christie here in a 3-1 win. Uh, Christie getting a double as well, which is good to see see and another three points to add to the tally in this episode so lads it turns out that the playoff will be playing in the champions league was coming a bit sooner than i was expecting and it is going to be spanish outfit valencia who i did one of my favorite ever career modes with back in fifa 20 they will be the team we will be facing in the champions league playoff we got dundee united there as well in the cup but valencia will be the team we'll be facing so what i'm thinking is to make things a bit interesting I might play the highlights of the first leg or show you the highlights of the first leg and then we will play the second leg in full just to make it a bit interesting. But it's the first time we'll be playing in the playoff round of the Champions League and let's hope that we can have a successful run at it because as some of you will remember if you've been watching long enough we have said that if we don't get to the quarterfinal of the Champions League which is the goal that I've set for us we do have to sell our two highest rated players that aren't named Phil Brooks because he's here for life. That's just the rules, okay? <laughs> but everyone else is eligible to be sold if they are in the highest two rated players in the squad. So a lot riding on this. So because of that Champions League game coming up, I am going to put out the second team here. Pulisic still in goal, and I've decided to give both Furuhashi and Ida a rest, so Palma can go up front. Forrest goes over there on the right. He'll be retiring at the end of the season as well, so I want to try and give him a little bit more game time. Yang over on the left, uh, completely rotated back forward there, as you can see. McGregor back as captain, so can we get the three points in this game as well? We don't. It's a three-all draw. Scales, Yang, and Christie on the score sheet, so we drop points in this game but thankfully we have a healthy enough lead that I'm not overly worried it was with a rotated team as well so listen that's the risk you take uh, when you sim these games but look at least we're still unbeaten in this episode and now let's get into the highlights of the game against Valencia 
I'm sorry, something just caught my eye there. Before we get into the highlights of this Valencia game, I had to talk about this. So, I understand a lot of you are new to the channel, and this is probably the first career mode series you're watching on here. But if you watched my previous series with Oxford, which was the FC24 uh, career mode we did, at uh, the final FC24 career mode that we did, I should say, and actually the only one. <laughs> Look at who's on the bench. Look at who Valencia's backup goalkeeper is. It's Beadle! That is so random. He was our goalkeeper in season one. We brought him back as a backup goalkeeper for the final couple of seasons. And here he is on the bench for Valencia. So good to see that he's doing well. But obviously now we need to try and knock him out of the Champions League. So the first leg is complete here at the Estadio Mestalla, one of my favorite stadiums in the world. But it was not our day. Spoiler alert. There you can see them go 1-0 up after I think it was 10 minutes. They were absolutely battering us. Guerrera, or Guerra, I should say, with a very, very good finish. Pulisin, who's had a great episode, was unable to stop that one from going in. We did have a few chances. Made it here with one of them. I'm not going to lie, I can barely remember it. Oh yeah, tried a curler. Did not go anywhere near the target, so I don't even know why I bothered showing that. Pulisin, though, showing that he can still be relied upon when it matters most. He stopped us from going 2-0 down there with a very good save. And their keeper made a save here as well. Obviously, Mamar Dishvili would have left him at this stage. Brilliant save there, though, by their new keeper. What's his name? Uh, Dimitrovetsky, I think, is how you say it. Uh, Adamita though, the main man getting the equaliser. Christy with a good ball. I played Christy over Hatate. Didn't work out as well as I had hoped, but Ida showing that he is still the man to bang in the goals. Getting a very good equaliser there right at the start of the second half. But then of course, the next attack. What do Valencia go and do? They go and make it 2-1. So, this player's name is Laba, which is the Irish way of saying bed, which is appropriate because our defence was fast asleep there. It's a brilliant finish, but who was marking him? How does he have that much space? How is he able to get a shot off from there? And unfortunately, that shot did lead to them scoring their second goal of the game. But then, Ida showing that he is, once again, the main man to get the goal. I'm sorry, I can feel a cough coming. <coughs> I was fighting that back there since we started this recording. And uh, yeah, I couldn't fight it back anymore. My apologies. But Ida did get the equaliser. That was 2-2. I don't know why they're showing it twice, the highlight. And then with five minutes to go, heartbreak. Valencia get another one. Carter Vickers with a decent attempt at trying to block that shot. But it was too powerful, too quick. If anything, Carter Vickers was nearly too quick because he took the shot after he'd gone past him. And Valencia did get a 3-2 win here in the first leg. But look, it's still all to play for at Celtic Park. It's not the worst result you can get in the first leg. Uh, but before we get into the full game on this episode against Valencia in the second leg, we do have a cup game against Dundee United to get through first. So we put out a completely rotated team against Dundee United. If we have a look at the lineup here, as you can see, Sinasalo in goal. First appearance of the season for him. There was a couple of youth academy players there as well. Uh, if we go to the bench, uh, where is he? McGovern we played. Uh, Forrest is not a youth academy player. Where's the other one? There was definitely one more. Oh, he's already on the pitch. Sorry, Cochrane. I forgot that uh, we brought him off the bench. <laughs> but we brought in a few of the, the younger lads to give them an appearance just to have everyone uh, fully rested for the game against Valencia. A 2-0 win. Palma and Meda with the goals, both coming off the bench. Christy did get a red card, so he will be suspended for the next domestic game. But at least it means he'll be a bit fresh for this Valencia game, which is next and will be played in its entirety. Celtic Park is ready. We're ready. Valencia, I'm sure, are ready as well. This promises to be a classic. 3-2 down from the first leg against the Spanish outfit. But it is still all to play for. We have a full-strength team. The only change I made at all in the squad was that... Uh, oh, here we go. Teleporting through brick walls again. Uh, is that Scales was a bit knackered on the bench. So Reyes will be on the bench as the backup centre-back instead. Not really a big deal. They're both 76 rated. So if we do need to change anything at the back, at least we have a quality player to do so. But everyone in the starting 11 is fully fit. Valencia... They look prepared for it. They look ready. It's funny. If you combine the colours of uh, the two jerseys, it's the Irish flag. So, a nice looking aesthetic on the pitch there for us. And there's the Irishman himself, Adamida, the man in form. Hopefully he can add to his tally this season in this game. And let's just get on with it. 
Celtic get things going. We're one goal down, but we're far from out. Let's be having you, Valencia. Oh, God, that career mode I did back in FIFA 20. I actually did stream a little bit of it over on Twitch uh, back during COVID, but that Valencia career mode was, uh, was a special one. It was one of my favorite career modes I've ever done. And let's just say, expect to see a bit more Valencia on the channel over the next few years. We'll definitely have to uh, do a Valencia career mode at some stage. It's uh, definitely something that's in the books to be uh, to be done on the channel at some stage. Uh, I actually, and this is crazy because, you know, this, this game has basically only just come out. I already know who I want to do my three career modes with in FC26. And uh, listen, of course, uh, plans can change, but it's three very fun clubs that uh, I would love to do a series with. So watch this space. But of course, we still have the rest of this series for FC25 and two more very exciting series coming as well. Oh, that's a good block. And a good tackle there, or good interception, I should say, by Cameron Carter-Vickers. Hitate with a good ball out to Maida. He's gotten a few assists already this season, and he's gotten a big one here as well. And it's Adam Ida who gives us the lead here against Valencia. What a ball by Days and Maida. That was absolutely fantastic. And Ida, that was a very hard cut there with the camera, with a lovely volley. Shores couldn't get anywhere near him, and sure enough, we are in front on the night, level on aggregate. Of course the quarterfinal is the main goal, but bloody hell, if we got knocked out in the, in the, I keep saying prelims, in the playoff, that would be depressing. At least last 16, it's proper knockout football. This, this feels like a precursor to knockout football. <laughs> but it's 3-3 on aggregate now, 1-0 up on the night. Perfect start for the hoops. Oh, but Valencia could be in here again. Is Guerra, Guerra, I should say, got the goal in the first leg, or one of the goals, I should say, in the first leg. But Cameron Carter Vickers deals with that. But at the moment, he would be one of the players that would be sold if we don't get to the quarterfinal. He's the highest rated player in the team. I think he's, is he 82 rated? Yeah, oh no, he's 81 rated, sorry. But regardless, he's still the highest rated player. That's a good ball by Ida. You scratch my back, I scratch yours, he says to Maida. And it goes up for a corner. But Valencia looking a bit uh, shaky here in the opening 23 minutes or so. Hatate will whip this in. Cameron Carter Vickers won the header, but scuffed it wide. And they will get the goal kick. I always like to see Valencia do well in real life, though. I, I think they're one of those teams that, you know, I didn't have much of a connection to them before I did the career mode. I always liked the stadium, which is why, uh, or one of the reasons why I wanted to do a career mode with them, Valencia. And I know they've obviously been talking about changing their stadium. Oh, that's a good ball. Oh, my God. That's what I get for praising them. We showed them a bit too much respect, and they took advantage of it. And we're level on the night. But behind again on aggregate. The away fans have found their voice again. As Valencia find the back of the net again for the fourth time in this tie. And it's 1-1 one, one on the night. 4-3 on aggregate. Uh, we can't get knocked out in the playoffs. We just can't. Honestly, if, if we do, I'll be very, very disappointed with this uh, Champions League campaign. Last season was fantastic, coming sixth in the league phase, giving Villa uh, a good fight in the last 16. That was a terrible, terrible way to lose the ball. But I did say at the time last season, it was probably, it was probably a year too soon to do that well in the Champions League. And uh, they're finding it very comfortable on the ball at the moment, Valencia. I'm not finding it comfortable at all. Brooks has been left in no man's land. He is struggling today. Oh, what a save by Pulisic. That would have been it. I know we had a great comeback against Bayern Munich in the last episode, but that would have been it. Surely we get the free kick there. Okay, no. You played the advantage, but don't give us the free. Thanks, ref. And we're already approaching half-time. 
Hatate. That's a foul. No, it's not. He won the ball. <laughs> oh, right. Dorado. He can't do anything about it. Neither can Cameron Carter Vickers. And Valencia will be kicking themselves. They could be 3-1 up in this half. Thankfully, that just beat the post. Let's see how close it was. Eh. Well, I mean, it was pretty close, to be fair. But I think it looked closer in real time. Probably only going to be one added minute, I would imagine. Yep. So let's try and see if we can take advantage of that minute. Meta! Nope, we can't. <laughs> no, we can't. And the referee's still not blowing the whistle. Now he blows it. Half time, 1-1 one, one on the night. 4-3 on aggregate. As it stands, we are crashing out of the Champions League in the playoff round. Not very fun times. But still another 45 minutes to play. And of course, Valencia are the ones who get off to the uh, better start in this second half. Well, Sesson Young's been done there. Good save by Pulison. He's had a very good episode. A very, very good episode, so he has. And it's kind of making me sad that he could be one of the players that does get sold. Oh, my God. Oh, what a brilliant... He is unbelievable. David de Pulison. That's what I'm going to start calling him. He's the regen of Kasper Schmeichel, who's the son of Peter Schmeichel. So, as we said in the last episode, he's basically a third-generation goalkeeper. Meda gets completely taken out there. What colour is the card going to be? It's a red! It's a red card for for uh, Shores. But I'll tell you what. I think that might be a bit harsh. I'll have to see it again. Oh, no. He, he got him from behind. But it was the first big foul of the game. I'm surprised he's gone with the straight red. But can we take advantage of that now? We take the free kick short. Here's Santos. He's scored a few beauties this season. Oh, but unselfishly gives it to Adamida, who gives us the equaliser here on aggregate. Probably should have gone and picked up the ball. But we lead again at Celtic Park on the night. It's all square in the tie. And Valencia are a man down as well as a goal down. We need to take advantage of this. Adamida on the spot again. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, God. I apologise. It's very rude of me. There's nothing worse than when you can feel a sneeze coming, but it just won't quite just leave your nostrils. It's very annoying. But I tell you what would be more annoying is if we were to concede straight away, which we don't. Well done, Cameron. But yeah, Pullison would be one of our higher rated players, and I think by the end of the season he'll probably be either the highest rated player or the second highest rated player if he keeps going the way he's going 80 rated at the moment we got him on a free so at least if we did sell him it would be making a profit no matter how much we sell him for and I do have you know some decent options in mind if we did have to replace the goalkeeper but I'd rather not but we'll see we'll see what happens but Santos going on the run here oh I thought Ida was going to be a bit quicker there with his run that was a stupid ball. Lopez. Johnston with the interception. I'm going to make a change. Santos, as tired as he is, I'm going to put him over here on the left and take off Hitate. Bring on Christy. For Hashi, I'll leave on the bench for now. But I have a feeling he'll probably be called into action at some stage. If, especially if we're still chasing a goal, which we may not be. Oh, Ida. I thought he had more space to run into. Oh, he's done really well. Adamida. Oh, it's unselfish. It's Meda. And it's 3-1 on the night. It's 5-4 on aggregate. I need to relax a small bit because I'll lose my voice if I keep going the way I'm going. It's been a rough week for me in terms of my, uh, my health. <laughs> and I cannot risk losing my voice. That would be a disaster. But I tell you what, Valencia, they're looking at a disaster at the moment. Getting knocked out of the Champions League. In the playoff round, Meda was pivotal in our comeback against Bayern Munich, which was a big reason why we ended up qualifying for this part, or this round, I should say, of the Champions League. We do end up making that change at Ryan Christie. And we do lead on aggregate for the first time. 
and only 20 minutes to go as well can we see this out Christy as I say comes on for Hatate. I might have said made it earlier if I did I apologise here's Kuhn he's been a little bit quiet in today's episode oh I was hoping the curse of the commentator might have uh, come into play there well it wouldn't have been our curse it would have been a blessing Valencia would have been the ones who would have felt the force of the curse that's a good tackle there by Johnston and it's back with Pulisic And if we do get to the quarterfinal, there is another stipulation that I must uh, abide by, just to make it more of a challenge. But obviously I'll talk about that if we do get to the quarterfinal, which isn't even the next round. We would still have to go through another uh, two-legged tie to get there. So lots of work to be done. Oh, not enough on that cross. I was looking for Santos. Christie's going to have a go. Oh, he's hit the bar! And Edek isn't there. To, or he was nearly there, I should say, to put it in for 4-1 oh I didn't mean to press that I accidentally pressed the shoot button there Dorado you have a goal lad why not maybe that was why not because you've got barely any power behind it and it's not really your specialty is it good header away there though by uh, by Johnston a captain's header Adam Eda now only 5 minutes to go can we seal it here with Meda? it's a good save but it's Ryan Christie the substitute who has surely sent Celtic to the proper knockout rounds of the Champions League where is he going where is he going bloody hell he kept running there and there was no cutscene Meda's header too hot to handle for the keeper Christie was in the perfect position to slot it home and send us through to the last 16 and you know what just to run down the clock a little bit let's make some changes McGregor can come on for Santos Furuhashi can come on for Ida and let's give uh, let's give Reyes a game for Carter Vickers why not he hasn't been able to play quite as many games as I would have expected this season Reyes and we do need to start rotating the team a bit try and give some players a rest especially with the bigger games now coming up and he can get the last few minutes here. Soak up this incredible atmosphere at Celtic Park. As yet another successful European night has taken place in this gorgeous stadium. So many incredible European nights. And I've always said, oh, as Christy could be in here again. Oh, it's Maida. It's Maida. Oh, I tried to be too clever. Oh, I tell you what, they nearly made a mess of that. But what I was going to say was there's been so many incredible European nights here which is why I wanted the main focus to be on the Champions League in this career mode to have Scotland's first European champions become the second ever European champions from this country and we have taken another step towards doing that listen it's probably still going to be too early for us to do it if we won the Champions League in this season I would be very very shocked especially even if we do get to the quarterfinal as planned because the uh, stakes will be raised if we are to get there but we do qualify look at this lovely image here of whatever that was but there's a lovely image Celtic Park going mental come on the boys we're through to the last 16 of the Champions League so lads before we wrap things up there's a couple of things i want to get into uh, some of them directly talking about this series and other things not so much <laughs> but basically uh, the first thing i want to get into here is the league table so as you can see here six points clear of rangers who are in second place hearts in a distant third aberdeen in a distant fourth and hibs in a very distant fifth so again it's celtic and rangers going for the title and thankfully it's the green and white side of glasgow that is leading the race at the moment tomorrow at 7 p.m uk and irish time the usual time we will reveal our last 16 opponents in the champions league so stay tuned for that it's a familiar opponent so i'm very very much looking forward to playing them again we have already played them in the league phase so it's going to be one of seven teams that you've seen us play already so uh yeah that'll be revealed tomorrow but speaking of tomorrow there is another video i want to make as well that will be going live at about 12 p.m irish slash uk time so we recently passed 300 subscribers on this channel and the reason i say we is because we're in this together okay i might be the one who makes the videos but you're the people who tune in and you give me the motivation to keep making these videos honestly if you told me before this series that every video i've made up to this point at the time of recording has surpassed 100 views i would have been thrilled so the fact that two of them have gotten over 2,000 views one of them with 3,000 views that's mind-blowing to me 
I think I was on like 155 subscribers, something like that, when I started making this series. And the fact that we've already passed the 300 mark at this stage, I'm very, very grateful for. So whether you're new to the channel and this series is what made you subscribe, or whether you've been here since, you know, the Tarly United days or the Clone United days, or even before then, when I was uploading different types of videos, I appreciate it all the same. It really means a lot to me. So for the new subscribers, uh, with the amount of new subscribers that I've been getting, I should say, I thought I'd make a little video to kind of just talk about me for a bit, which is something that I, I'm very good at doing, talking about myself. But it's just to kind of give you a bit of an idea of, you know, why I started making these videos, uh, how I got into football, you know, why I support the team that I support, which obviously a, a lot of you will already know uh, who I support. Uh, the question I get all the time of, do I also support a local team? I'll get into that a little bit. And also, I want to talk about some of my other interests outside of football. Some of you will know me from different industries than, you know, football. Uh, so you'll already be aware of, you know, some of the other interests I have. I think uh, Phil Brooks, who is obviously a reference to CM Punk being in this series, tells you about at least one of the other interests that I have on this channel. And it's kind of me just trying to, you know, kind of tell you guys who I am. I always kind of like to get to know the YouTubers that I watch, especially the ones who make, you know, uh, gaming videos. And that's something I kind of wanted to do myself. But also it gives you a chance to kind of see what videos you'd like me to make away from from the uh, FC25 videos. We obviously have uh, two other career modes planned after this, which I'm very, very excited about, but I want to do even more on this channel. I don't want this just to be uh, gaming on this channel, or sorry, let me take that back. I don't want it to just be FC25 content on this channel, and also I don't want it to just be gaming. That's obviously going to be a big part of it, but I want to do other things as well. So I'm going to make that video, which will be uploaded tomorrow, uh, give you an idea of, um, you know, what I would be able to do and kind of see what, uh, you know, interest you would have based off some of my other interests. And yeah, that'll be available there uh, on the channel at 12 o'clock tomorrow. So if it's something that you're interested in watching, uh, it'll be available at that time but if you just want to watch the career mode stuff well you'll be happy to know that you don't have to watch that video and the next episode will be uploaded at the usual time of 7 p.m uk slash irish time so lads regardless of what the next video that you watch on this channel is thank you all so much for tuning in please uh, hit that like button if you did enjoy the video and also consider subscribing to the channel and i will talk to you all tomorrow take care